Hi, this is David Richter Scale Studios. I got up early this morning before I go do my real uh, work and did a test, uh, no, no, a te I guess a test print. Um, I did the Moai and I switched from the Corality uh, test roll, that white filament. You see the Benchy next to it, turned out amazing. And then I, I went to the, was talking about Paramount filament. That's one of my favorite colors, that is uh, Primordial Earth. And the Moai turned out amazing. And the polypropylene sheet is working great. I did some reading on it. And just bringing it up to temperature is not enough because I had a couple failed prints in the very beginning. And I thought it was bed leveling, uh, but it's nothing to do with that. You have to get the let the polypropylene warm up a little bit. So let it get to temperature, wait five minutes, then print, and it's flawless. I could not get this off till about 30C or a little bit less. We're at 41C right now, and that is still solidly on there. So uh, that is that. That is that with the uh, polypropylene. In the left side, you see the uh, Prusa again. If you saw my update, I was doing a uh, vertical print orientation of the Pet Fang 2 air duct for the Ender 3, and you can see great finish with the uh, iron red ABS by Paramount. But the top was a total failure. We have a giant hole in that. When you have air ducts, you can't have holes. And I'm noticing on the new print at the new orientation, everything looks great, except you can see these inlets from the stock uh, CR or the Ender 3 fan. There's a little hole next to one of these, but this is going to be covered. So that won't affect it at all. So that's going to be awesome. And the whole point of this uh, little introductory, I'm going to do a test print between the stock setup on the Ender 3 and do the Pet Fang with all the same equipment, just a different air duct. I'm going to do a piece of terrain from Corvus Games Terrain. It's a little lookout tower has a lot of overhangs and um, difficult things that need to be cooled. So this is uh, going to be introductory to that. So we'll be back. We're going to do uh, Primordial Earth and we're going to do one with the uh, stock fan, obviously. Then I will switch it over to the pet fang and then we'll see the different qualities and see how that different air ducting affects everything. So we'll see you in a second. Thanks for joining. Okay, we're back for a second just to give you an update. Uh, this The uh, piece of terrain I'm doing is Corvus Games Terrain Freedom Fighter Compound Series. This is called the Walled Compound Lookout. I'll put a picture up right now of it. It shows, it's, it, we see it's a very challenging print with a lot of overhangs and girders and stuff like that. So we'll see how that uh, works. It's got a great uh, start with the uh, Paramount uh, Primordial Earth PLA. Uh, you can see in the, uh, oops, in the bottom left, I bumped the cameras, great. Uh, the Moai came out wonderful. Uh, 36C and it just slipped off the bait, uh, the build plate. Uh, looks like a tiny bit of under extrusion on the head. I don't know if you can see that. I have it at a 0.97 extrusion multiplier, and it, I mean, it's almost flawless. You can see under the ears, it, uh, started, it's not so smooth, but a uh, great looking print, great texture. Love it. Um, we have success on the uh, Pet Fang 2. Uh, which is the uh, Paramount Iron Red ABS. Uh, as you can see here, those little holes I told you about. And let me see, I have a old CR-10S fan, same squirrel fan, cooling fan they use on the uh, Ender 3. Basically all the um, components are the same as, car as the hot end goes. And that's gonna cover everything up. So we have no problems. This is gonna look amazing. Let's see if we can like hold it up to that. That's going to be a cool color combination or contrast to that. It's like a, they call it iron red, but it's almost blood or tomato juice red too. So uh, that is it for right now. Uh, over on the, uh, real quick, got the wire string relief uh, and the ABS being printed on the Prusa. Still got to work on the mount and get the uh, supports fixed on that. I got to turn my reading glass so I can't even see. Uh, so we'll get that straightened out. We'll have that printed. Then uh, this is it says a five and a half hour print. So with Simplify 3D in reality, i uh, probably say six and a half, seven hours. So uh, this is going to be going on for a while. So uh, we'll see you again in a second. Hey, I'm back. Uh, real quick, I've got part of my day finished. It is 101 degrees in the Sacramento area. I live up in the foothills. It's 95, so it's not much cooler. Um, I just want to see that obviously this is the uh, the lookout tower we talked about in the uh, section before this and you can see it's got some stringing on it on the got something to point with I can see some stringing there it looked like you know those uh, those aren't 45 degree arches either so it's doing it 
but uh, I don't know if that looks soft. I've done another one of these before, and I, I, I got it in a box of a bunch of prints, so I cannot tell you offhand. And uh, we have over on the Prusa, you can see the uh, wire restrain, uh, wire strain relief is finished. I'll take that off and clean it up, and then get the, uh, the mount uh, redesigned, or not redesigned, re, um, get all the uh, supports redone on it to hopefully uh, keep it from uh, failing again. So that is it for right now, and uh, by the time we come back, uh, I'll have the uh, fang on there and have the uh, lookout tower going again, and then we'll do a comparison at the very end of the video. I'm back again real quick. Um, it's almost finished. We're at 93%. It looks like over on the Prusa, uh, the mount for the uh, fang 2 is going to work. Let me put that in front of you. So I have the wire strain relief on, and uh, those are number two, three eighths number two wood screws holding that together. I you had the fang on my uh, CR10 for a while, and it used all those screws. And there is, I guess there is a redesign on this thing from the fang one and the fang two. Let me see if I can get this further. Let me put it up here. There we go. You see the fang one, and it looks like it's got better airflow with the new one and bigger holes. So instead of ha having to go find these wood screws, I remember putting this together, there was a kind of vagueness about what screws to use. And I went and found the smallest wood screw at my uh, hardware store. Then when I did the make uh, post on Thingiverse, put that and it worked. But the new fang two has instructions with the M3s and M3 nuts you need. And if you're a 3D printer, you should have M3s on hand. I bought a little box on Amazon with the, uh, the uh, nuts and various sizes from uh, M, M36 to, uh, I think, M325 or M322, something like that. So um, we're close to that. Uh, the lookout tower is looking great. And if like I said that before, uh, you can see on the left side there's some stringing. So when you have air coming from the right side, maybe that might affect it. So we'll see. Uh, we'll be back. We're back real quick. We had success with the uh, tower. Uh, the pet bang was um, a success, obviously. A little tough getting it on with the ABS. I think it got some shrinkage. And getting it onto the X plate, I had to struggle with a little bit. And also that new uh, mounting plate, uh, instead of do DIYing it with wood screws, they have uh, designed into it uh, places that accept M3 nuts. So when you put the M3 bolts in there, which are really good instructions on it, I'll put a link to it on the uh, video here. Um, came together really nicely. I added my own little uh, fan shroud to protect the fans. Uh, I've had tools and fans don't mix. So I put an ABS um, filament. That is another one by Paramount. That is Castle Limestone Gray, another cool color. A little bit lighter and greener than the uh, Primordial Earth, which is like a very warm uh, gray, uh, very brownish gray. And what else did I do? Oh, I ripped off that uh, create that weird capped on tape and uh, cotton and put on a silicon sock from Tiny Machines. So uh, that's a little upgrade to it. So uh, we'll be back and we'll compare them and see if the uh, switching of the pet fang from the stock setup was worth it. Okay, we'll finish up this video right here. Uh, first off, I don't notice any uh, difference in the overhangs. Actually, Underneath it did worse with the fang than it did with the uh, stock um, setting. But over here, this is the stock version. We have that and a little bit over there. But here we see underneath it's all bird nested on the side. But it, it the only thing I noticed that may be better with the fang is there's less noise in the print. But there's like one big uh, like artifact there. But in general, it looks less noisy, especially on this side, you can notice it. Let's see if I can. It's a little cleaner. I'm gonna install some uh, smoothers. I'll show those in a second. Let's see if we can put this up really close. But if you hit the light right, it's, I don't know, you can see it from my, uh, right there. The salmon skin's a lot worse on the uh, 
stock extruder and then it's on the, the with the fang it could be with that metal um sh uh, fan sh or the uh, hot end shroud that it's vibrating a little bit more and then with the plastic it's uh, more of a dampening effect so uh, that might affect it uh, i notice there's more salmon skin in general on this printer than uh, my other ones um, if i can s let me pull this down right now I'm doing another print by Corbus Games Train called the Desert Tower, I believe. And let's see if I can just pull this around real quick. And there is tremendous amount of uh, salmon skin on this one. Let me see, get my cameras moving. There we go. Let me get that bigger again. That's ridiculous. There we go. You can see all the things. And I'm also using a different uh, profile on this. Uh, this is from someone on YouTube, and the retraction settings are way too low. There's all kinds of uh, spider webs and stuff happening with it. Uh, for some reason, they put it down to a four retraction. It does not work. You need to get it back up to like five to six. Probably six in the sixes is much better on a, any kind of CR10 uh, type printer. So I'll also, I just want to show you these. I have the um, TL smoothers. I'm going to probably put just two in probably. And... I have steppers to uh, quiet down the printer a little bit, and we'll do a separate video on that. I'm going to use a sound meter and all that fun stuff. And you can see over on the Prusa Mark III, I'm printing out a custom um, uh, electronics cover for the Ender III. Uh, this is the first part of it. This is going to be a new uh, air, air shroud, if you can see it on there. So this is going to be a complete taking the metal... Um, control box cover and replacing it with this ABS. And then the part that's printing right now is gonna have mounts for the smoothers. So I don't have to worry about them shorting out in the box. And then obviously it has, for ABS this wasn't a bad print. It had a hard time with that overhang. I printed it uh, upside down like this with a, a, a large brim. So it didn't come off. I mean, there's no warping at all. This is solid. So um, the fang, it looks cool. It might help. Uh, with the uh, salmon skin a little bit, with that vibration. I don't know if it's sam the salmon skin or the vibration of that translates into the uh, print itself as an artifact. It looked like it helped a little bit on that. On cooling and bridging, uh, I don't see anything really crazy about that. So um, it's more of a cosmetic thing and a little bit better quality on the print. So we'll leave it at that, and we'll see you in the next video. Thank you for joining me.